Hello, my name is Bernard Robert, and I'm going to talk to you about the most amazing cell in the body. Spermatozoa are remarkable. They're cells that, the only cells in the body that are haploid, they have half the number of chromosomes. They have managed to get rid of most of their cytoplasm, compact their DNA in a remarkably small package to deliver it to the egg. They grow a tail during their development, they swim, and they package a remarkable amount of energy to do that. They also divide at a crazy rate, a thousand sperm every heartbeat in an adult man. And you can see that comes out to many, many sperm in a lifetime. <clears throat> Interest in the cell allows you to do a lot of things. So you can try to come up with male contraceptives by blocking the synthesis or the maturation of these cells. You can try to treat infertility. Infertility is a result, often in male infertility, of having germ cells that are not functional. Germ cells are targets for a lot of toxicants, either drugs people take or environmental chemicals. And the question of aging has also come up. As you know, during aging, female lose reproductive function and what happens to males. And so, in fact, we have been interested in studying all four of these aspects in our laboratory over the last many years. Uh, won't say how many. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, we've developed an approach to male contraception by looking at hormonal uh, blockade of the synthesis of sperm and that is in clinical trials now. We have to uh, try to block the maturation of sperm by blocking the formation of the active androgen in the maturation process. We have looked at male infertility, looking various approaches of why, how sperm actually mature during the epididymal transit, that's this tube where sperm go from being immature to mature. And from the environmental perspective, we've looked at uh, cancer chemotherapeutic agents for many years trying to get to the mechanism by which cancer chemotherapeutic agents given to the male affect the sperm chromatin quality and how that affects the children of men who are treated with these drugs. We've done this with animal models and with human subjects. And we're now very actively looking at how environmental chemicals are affecting sperm quality and function. But what I'm going to focus on today is aging. So we know that sperm number don't decline very much with age, but the question has become, has the sperm chromatin quality or sperm quality change, does that change during aging? And in fact, the reason for this worry is because it has been observed that men who are older, who are married to younger women, have children that have a wide range of abnormal children, uh, abnormal progeny. And these abnormalities in children are mostly neurological, higher incidence of ADHD, schizophrenia, but there are also complications with cancer and other diseases. <clears throat> this is in men who are older than 45 in studies where the female partner is younger, and it's been clearly established, this link with paternal age. It's not the sperm number. It's a quality of the sperm. So what's wrong with those sperm? Well, we did the first animal studies back in the 90s showing that there's an effect of the quality of sperm. We have been trying to determine what the source of that difference is. Is it at the level of the stem cell in the testis? Or is it at the level of gene expression? Or are there epigenetic marks? <clears throat> and so here we are showing you that there is an increase with advanced paternal age, in pre-implantation loss, in the weight of the embryos, and most importantly, in the postnatal death rate in, uh, ma in males that are older mated to young females. The cause of the damage seems to be related to oxidative stress, at least in part. We can see at the top panel uh, histology of the testis in young and old, and, we, and the brown denotes the oxidative stress. If we look at spermatozoa, you can see that uh, the damage to the DNA, the atox ODG, is very much higher in sperm of older males. If you isolate genes and you look at gene expression, 
you see, <coughs> sorry, stem cells rather, you look at gene expression, you, we see that there is many genes expressed in older males that are not expressed in young males. And we are currently focusing on how we go forward with this, so we're looking at isolating stem cells in the rat model, looking at not just the gene expression, but the epigenetic marks. And in human studies, we're trying to identify the uh, epigenetic changes in the germ cells as a function of age. <laughs>